Hello, everyone, and welcome to Diz Unplugged, episode 1196, this November 1st, which is, for me, the start of the holiday season. Uh, I am here at the table. Joy well, no, we're live in the Bob Varley studio, as usual. I'm filling in for Pete. I am uh, John, a.k.a. Panda. I am here at the table with a lot of nice people. Uh, one here is Alyssa White. She is a guest Hi. panelist today. Hi, Alyssa. Hi. How you doing? <laughs> From movingtoorlando.com, Ruben Cologne. Hi there. The effervescent Teresa Eccles. Hey. And the always humorous and witty Rhino Clavin. Hello. And then the genius tech guy, oh. the magnanimous Craig Williams in the studio. Oh, hoy, hoy. In the producer's mm -hmm. Uh, as usual, this is brought to you by DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com. If you're thinking about a trip to Disney or even non-Disney, it could be Universal Studios, it could be Royal Caribbean Cruises, believe it or not. Uh, we can do that for you, so come to DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com. You will get a great agent. Uh, it's just, you, you need somebody, a, a, a travel advocate in your corner, DreamsUnlimitedTravel.com. And another reminder that after the show, we do a Patreon show. Uh, that is, is it just for the $10 and up tier, or is it all tier? All tiers. Uh, Patreon show, which is specifically for our Patreons, it's patreon.com slash Diz Unplugged. Is it? Yeah, I think that's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can go there and watch the after show where we say things that we would not normally say on this show. It's kind of like the private club. Uh, <laughs> so we're going to have fun for an hour, I hope, here. Uh, Something that, a news article that came across to me, thank you, Craig, was uh, Chapik had made some comments during a Q&A to the Wall Street Journal. And it says, Chapik, something about Disney becoming a lifestyle brand. Uh, yeah, Chapik Disney moves to lifestyle brand. Now, to me, that seems silly because I always thought Disney was a lifestyle brand. I live, eat, breathe Disney. Since I can remember, they've had a waffle maker. They've had clothes. So I don't know. The, the thing that stood out to me, and I'm going to read you a little clip. This is where I think the article is different. I think they probably missed the, the big headline. Disney CEO discussed an upcoming link between guests' Disney Plus viewing preference and their park experience. So are they trying to integrate the digital with the physical? That would be different. Like if something I do on Disney Plus... Uh, makes Genie Plus suggest something to me because I watched The Mandalorian. Am I going to get suggested more Galaxy's Edge stuff? That would be interesting. Yeah. Um, I mean, so for me, I, I just want to know what they mean by this article. I don't know exactly what they're talking about because, like, as you said, it pretty much they've been doing this the whole time. But if it's like what you said and they're trying to find a way to kind of, like, interconnect Disney Plus with be more interactive, I guess, with the parks... I like that. I've seen stuff kind of similar to that. Like, people try to do that before, and it just doesn't work out. Um, the first thing that comes to mind um, are those, like, virtual, like, where you, like, kind of, like, affect what happens in the movies, like Bandersnatch, I think it was. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's the first thing that comes to mind, and I know that's a little bit, probably, you know, way, like, different from, you know, what I'm talking, oh, what this is about. But I would like to see what Disney's take on that would be. And I think, you know, Disney's great they come with a fantastic idea so it could be really cool to see yeah, i've i've noticed something when i'm watching disney plus they have logged me i have to log in every time yeah that to me tells me that they want to know who's watching what meaning if i just got done watching the mandalorian and somebody else in my household goes to watch something they're not going to log out and log themselves back in again they're going to go just watch something else and then disney doesn't know whose viewing habits that is whereas now if i go to watch something else i have to say who i am you know, of course, you could not say who you are. You could say you're somebody else, but you have to put in a PIN code. And I think they want to – it makes sense that they want to see who is doing what. How do you think you have I don't like idea? that. I don't – You think Big Brother's watching? Yeah, I don't like that crap. I mean, I – I mean, if it works, fine, I guess. I don't know. So if I'm on Disney Plus and I'm watching Pollyanna, how are you going to put that in the park for me? Yeah, yeah. You know, I'm not. I like the old stuff. Get to right? grab a girl by her pigtails. Or, there you or, go. Yeah. Does does that happen, Pollyanna? Pollyanna. No, nobody. Who's the girl who could walk up the walls and she had pigtails? Pippi Longstocking. Yeah, that's who I'm thinking. I'm <laughs> sorry. Yeah. If she were in the park now, I'd be actually, right it's there. Ernest. Never mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It is Pippi. Dude, it was Pippi. I don't know. I don't like things like that. It's like if I'm. I feel like as is if I'm talking to someone about something. Next thing I know, it's popping up on my phone. Or if you do that thing where you do the one look because something you were curious about one thing, or right. you wanted a gift, right. you're constantly getting you're constantly where I'd be like, I don't need it. 
Either it was a gift for me, or, or it's a curious. one-time purchase. I was just curious, or was curious about something. Yeah, I don't need the advertising. And now they're trying to make me, you know, buy me stupid ass oh, keto noodles. <laughs> uh, save it for Patreon. Sorry, Alyssa. What do you think? And but, but, you know, Alyssa, how did you get on the show? Tell yeah. us, tell us your story <laughs> before you answer this question, please. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I have been a listener, fan, Patreon supporter for a number of years, and um, having moved to Orlando this past year, uh, had the opportunity to meet some of you all in the parks and, and connect a little bit, and so um, definitely kind of pitched my shot to join the table, and and thankfully it worked out. So I'm here now as a guest and excited to you know participate in the conversation. Awesome. Cool. What do you think about this? Do you, do you see anything big happening with yeah, it? Yeah, you know, I think it kind of goes beyond the Disney Plus and Parks integration, like, for it. Like, when I think lifestyle, I think, how do you live and how does Disney help and support the way you live? And so the thing that came to my mind was also, aren't we still talking about Disney creating, like, homes and, and oh. like, places to live? And so that also came to mind for me where it's like, how does Disney get out of just being parks and entertainment, but also expand into, you know, more of just your day-to-day -day life? Wow. Stepford. Right. Like Stepford. <laughs> Stepford stuff happening. Yeah. I would live in a Disney community, would you, Ruben? Do they sell them through travel, uh, real estates, or no? Yeah, I mean, you have things similar to a Disney community. I mean, you, a celebration started as that, like when it first began. And then you have, right now, they're working um, with Del Webb, I believe, and Sunbridge about creating community over there. Um, so I've seen it before. Not to mention, like, I mean, you bring up a really good point, actually. Um, they, there was talks about Epcot being that exact thing yep. at one point in time, where it's supposed to be that future, or not Epcot, I'm sorry, tomorrow, was it Tomorrowland or Epcot? One no, of I think Epcot, the real Epcot? community okay. of Tomorrowland. Yeah, yeah so, so it was Epcot, and that was supposed to be that kind of that interactive, like, living. So, I mean, this is something that has actually got brought up a long time ago. I mean, Disney himself actually brought it up at one point. So now it's just kind of like resurfacing with today's technology, where it can actually, you know, maybe be somewhat doable in a different, you know, media, I guess. I just mean, remember when they said magic bands were going to have the effects on rides that they would, you know, maybe there would be a different path on a ride based on the magic bands people in the car, or maybe something would say your name. We never even got there. Yeah, so how'd I don't that know. go? <laughs> yeah, I don't know where this is going. I hope it goes somewhere. Anybody else have anything, Ryan? Anything? Nope. Nope. Okay. I Who's got? We got topics. I think all of us. Craig, do you have anything with this? Do you have any foresight about the uh, digital becoming physical? Um, no, it's like, because it, 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 we, I remember when we covered it ad nauseum when the first time he's said all of this about it. So nothing really new to add with it, but um, the, the interview was very bizarre if you actually took the time to watch it. It's, you know, he, it was funny because I think that happened on Wednesday and just that the day before in the Tuesday show, like I felt like we talked about park reservations for almost the entire hour and then the very next day that was covered in the interview and he basically doubled down once again on how important park reservations are for the entire company and it's you know i i, I go back and forth on bob chapek in terms of how i feel about his performance and his position and i'm not nearly as harsh as other people are but uh, it, you also have to sometimes just scratch your head and be like, why is no one feeding them information? <laughs> like, I know they pay attention to what's going on in, in the world on social media, and you have to be able to filter between the stuff that is just, you know, downright just mean towards everything he's doing because they don't like him as a person. You also have to throw away the people who think Disney can do no wrong because honestly, they're not helpful either. So you have to find that, that, that stretch of information that's right in the middle that is useful to them. And I just don't know if anyone is actually looking for it right now in the company. And that's, you know, that's obviously not a good thing that's something they need to to fix immediately so uh it's it, it, it was wild um you know because literally everything that we complained about for an hour last week then it was like them acknowledging yes this is all the stuff we know that will help everyone and and will be good and you know so many people out there saying no this won't help us it's very infuriating you have been actually very fair about uh chastising Chapik all the time. But he does need, like, a PR person to help him out a little bit. It, it seems like he has no guidance. Uh, it's, 
yes, he is not a great figurehead when it comes to it, but it's one of the things I, I know you were here last week, you were on uh, vacation on The Wish, so you missed out on it, but one one of the things that I, I feel like Disney has been at a disadvantage of for years now is the idea that the CEO does need to be the figurehead or the person in charge needs to be the figurehead. I know Walt had that personality and he came into your television uh, and, and was part of your your family on Sunday nights and Michael Eisner also had that exact same impact I mean that was our Sunday nights watching Michael Eisner lead into whatever the special or the movie was going to be and you know Bob Iger kind of like jumped into that here and there for special things on ABC over the years but I, I don't it, I don't know if we still live in a day and age where where Disney necessarily needs that person who's champion for them. Like they, the fans out there are already doing it themselves. I mean, it, it, the one hand though, it does help that there's someone you can hold accountable for when things aren't going your way. But then you also get in a situation like this where all this blame is going on one person that it just, it seems misguided. I think he's very easy to dislike and hate because of his look, because of his personality. If it was Josh in his place, some of the bad things would get waved away because people just what like do you mean Josh's because of his look. Because of his look, his his he's just got a hard look. He's got a hard stance. I think he's just a hard. He just seems like a hard person. He seems like not, not such a nice guy. And I think oh. if it was Josh tomorrow, people would just look overlook things a little bit. But does that make it any more real? And so, like, you know, we talk a lot about Chapek and how he's being held accountable. And I I kind of disagree, Craig, in the sense that, like, when you have a company like Disney that started with someone like Walt, who was that figurehead, who was really setting the tone, they've done a nice job of putting people in place that can be great business people and also have, you know, the personality to, to rein in the, the fans and get them to buy into the fans. And I think that's why having someone like Chapek is almost a little disheartening because you have someone that isn't able to gravitate to the people as easily as some of the other leaders of the company have. Um, and I think that's where the differentiation, you know, starts to set in. It's a sales job. Yeah. You just made that point. Right. So he's a salesman and he's not a good salesman for certain reasons. He's just not a great salesman. I'm going to start with you because I like your topic the best. Plus I'm going to go just around the room probably. Sure. Give us your, uh, your topic that you had, which I love. It's Christmas at Disney World. <laughs> Officially, it's November 1st. And um, so obviously, I spent my whole morning looking at all of the decorations that are up and all of the people that are in the parks and, and just seeing cast members celebrating the fact that the turnover into the holiday season has begun. I personally love this time of year the most. And so I will turn down all of the folks that say that Thanksgiving has to come first. Thanksgiving is a day. Christmas is a season. Uh, and, and I truly believe that. And so I'm really excited that we're in this time of year uh, and to see just all of the magical Christmas time celebrations that start i am totally with you on this do we know that last night stuff did start to change over in the magic kingdom it did, yeah because it happened in my house <laughs> as the as i was giving out candy i was putting away halloween and bringing out christmas that's the way to do it when, when are you going do you have a plan to go to the christmas party or the magic kingdom well magic kingdom so you know it's funny i actually have a reservation for earlier to, you know later today just to see um i did see that they haven't put up the christmas tree yet um but but none for the parties just yet but i know they start next week on the 8th i believe right? okay yeah Ruben, what do you think about christmas starting now yeah so i'm gonna sound like a grinch um <laughs> <laughs> I, okay, thank I'm you, one of those Teresa. <laughs> no, right? I'm one of those people that I'm, I'm a huge Halloween fan, huge Halloween fan. And the problem that I have with Christmas, you know, I love Christmas. Don't get me wrong. Christmas is great. Fantastic. Um, the problem I have with it is that it always starts earlier every single year. And it starts getting more and more into, like, interference. Like, I was shopping for Halloween decorations earlier in the month um, of October. Like, it was, like, maybe the first, maybe the second week in October. And here is, like, there was way more Christmas decorations than there were Halloween decorations. So, it, it breaks my heart because I, I'm a huge Halloween fan. Um, and I absolutely love horror movies and everything. Um, so, it just... Yeah, so I, I just wish, you know, Christmas can stay a season instead of become, you know, a, a year-round thing that I'm kind of starting to feel like it's turning into. Um, but other than that, I do I do love the uh, uh, the decorations they do in the parks. I absolutely love it. Um, even over Universal Grinchmas, Disney with the, um, you know, 
Uh, I think it's uh, Mickey's. I forgot what what their. Mickey's very merry Christmas. That, that's it. Um, so I, I absolutely love going to the parks during the holidays, except for on Christmas Day. It's slam, don't go yeah, yeah. <laughs> on Christmas Day. But um, I love it. I just you know. So you're okay with Halloween starting in August at the parks, but you're not okay with Christmas starting early. Okay, so that's just. Uh, I'm, I'm not gonna go Teresa too much threw into down. it. <laughs> That's just uh, Halloween Horror Nights starting early. I get that, you know, but but the parks the parks don't really start too much Halloween except for Halloween Horror Nights for the most part until well, like I would say Mickey's like Christ- Mickey's Christmas Mickey's Halloween party that started, started that. in August. Was it August? I, I believe it, it was. It did last start of August. August. It's like Mickey's what? Halloween started like the second week of August. First oh week wow! Of okay. August. Yeah. Well, okay, <clears> maybe <throat> it's because I'm biased then. I guess <laughs> it's Halloween. One man's but, opinion. <laughs> I, I absolutely just love Halloween. I just wish I can have more time to kind of enjoy it and instead of having to pack up my Halloween decorations the day of Halloween. It just when did you put weird. them out? There, uh, when I put them out? Uh, the first week of October, actually. Okay, so my Halloween decorations went out in August. Oh, okay. And my house is completely Halloween. But as of tonight and tomorrow, we're switching over. And it'll be, which really upsets my husband because he likes the little lull between it where there's not you know he likes his regular stuff that's sitting out but i'm ready for christmas bring it on Rana, you're more of a halloween guy right uh yeah i definitely prefer halloween over christmas i just i like the idea especially somebody who grew up as a you know where i just like the idea of you're celebrated for being whoever you want to be you know and i feel like it whether that's you find that through costumes through celebration and people celebrate all that crazy stuff like the differences and everything and i i don't it, I also i am inherently sad during christmas cuz i don't live near any family here so i've said it before on the show i struggle a lot this time of year um so i personally don't like just being miserable for two months like not miserable i like the aesthetic of christmas in the same way like i like a classic like i i like that um, era of advertising, advertising in like the fifties and sixties, and that sort of like retro, like kind of over the top, like huge light bulbs, big plastic Santa Clauses. You know, I, in the same way, I love those Halloween decorations. <laughs> the same way, but it's I my, it's just a very like, it was a lot going on in my for my family that time of year. So it's hard. It's I struggle being here and not there, and and so it's it's tough. it's hard when. When I first moved here, what, 14 years ago, I thought Christmas was going to be a bust because how can you celebrate in the heat? How can you celebrate with palm trees? It's not Christmas, but you got to find it somewhere. Yes, I Where agree with that. are you? I know, right? <laughs> I feel like you were just cute as a no take. No, I, do, I 100% agree. And there are some great traditions we've had and, and, and things like that. And, you know, I just, it's... Uh, I don't know. Craig said it to me once too, where where I think he's a hundred percent correct. Where he's like, it's it's like it's this little feeling that's like wrapped up in there. Where he's like, it is there is sadness in it. Like it's in all the music and everything like mm-hmm. that. And that's why you because it it feels like uh, sort of like sitting at that fireplace, you know, or like listening to that song. I I don't know how to put it into words, but he said it to me once, where I was like, yeah, that is right. You are correct. I mean, and I know no one that likes Christmas more than especially Christmas music more than Craig Williams. I think the ghost of Bing Crosby would have something to say about that. <laughs> Maybe Frank. Is that not you? Oh, no, it's, <laughs> it's not, no. Fortunately. <laughs> but uh, Patreon had a bunch of questions about Christmas and Christmas at the park, so I'm going to throw some of them out there. And the first one comes from Jane says, what rides besides the current Jingle Cruise and Speedway and Living with the Land do you think would be good for Christmas overlays? Mm. I know. Doesn't Monsters also usually get the overlay? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Not a ride. Subtly in that that same way. The same way for Halloween where they'll do the little special um, extra for it, but not not super Haunted Mansion should here. We don't do that here, but they do in California, right? There's also the one we're the most excited for. Guardians of the Galaxy is going to have a Christmas overlay this year. So that'll be exciting. First time. I can't wait to see what they do with Guardians. Still the Magic Kingdom nostalgia for me. I know this isn't answering the question because I don't know any others that would do it. Uh, I I think Tower of Terror actually would do pretty good. as Actually, I think it would do really, really good. 
um, just seeing like you know what they did with the Guardians version of it over in um, California. So that shows that they can easily just switch it back and forth, I guess. So I, agree. I feel like, I feel like that would be a really really cool ride to see with the Christmas overlay. They could change the movie in the beginning. Yeah. And they could have the hotel decorated in like a dead Christmas or something. There's a there's a story there. Christmas. I like that. Yeah, of course. So. Okay. Just getting back to the Magic Kingdom though. Just walking into the Magic Kingdom, I tear up when it's decorated and the music is going and then it starts to snow on Main Street. I love that. And I do miss the lighting of the ca- even though now there's projection, I miss the castle dream lights. Mm-hmm. You? Yeah, and you know it's funny. So having just moved here this past year, you know you talk about don't go to Magic Kingdom on Christmas Day. I've made a reservation. <laughs> and so I am far away from my family now and and that part that, you know, Rhino was talking about of being like a little sad. Now I'm thinking to myself, "Oh, maybe that will hit this year a little bit differently." And so um something to think about for sure, but it's one of the exciting things of moving here and being so close is that even if it's a really busy day or even if it's, you know, not the same as as what you expect on the regular day walking in, I think there will be some magic uh you know, well, I th- the time. Yeah, yeah, I think, I mean, there is, the, I've, I've, I've said it too, Craig, like on the end of Main Street, I'm, how many times we've done the Christmas party and I'll say it at the end of the night and I'm like, it's that, that hit when it's like nighttime and it is doing the fake snow and, you know, and sometimes it is incredibly hot and that those, those days are like, ah, oh, what is happening? But, you know, like with all the lights and everything that happens, it's just one of those things where you, it, it does encapsulate this like very special feeling where you're like, like, I don't know, it's like a. Like a little sigh or like a hug, you know, just like kind of seasonal hug, which is really nice. It does suck for cast members, though, and anyone in the service industry when you have to work on Christmas Day because it just it truly just feels like another day. And that's I hated that about Universal working on holidays like you could celebrate before and after, but it it didn't matter. And I mean, I know I know it affects lots of people. There's obviously uh, so many people who don't take the day off, uh, doctors, uh, people who work in the ER, firefighters, policemen, uh, like there's, there's a lot of people that go through it. So it's not just cast members that deserve it, but it is until you are in that position where you like have to just work all through that Christmas day, it's, it then you don't really understand how weirdly it throws it off. So it's, it is, it's. It was always funky being at Universal for the holidays like that, too, because guests weren't really, like, celebrating the holidays. They're just there as another day of their vacation. And they're not and then, nicer on those days. I was oh, just no. about to say, so, I, yeah. I, I worked at Universal yeah. and Disney, too. I was just about to say the yeah. exact same thing. They get crazy. Yeah. When they're spitting on you, it's the same kind of spit, whether it's got glitter in it or not. It, it's just another day on their vacation, and they treat it like it's just another day on not their everybody, vacation. Not everybody, not everybody. There's got to be people yeah, out there. There are always the there people are. who walk around and say, thank you for being here, yes, and they go out Give of their, their way. But so There needs to be more I mean, of that. Yeah, sometimes it's there's this thing that builds inside of you where you're like i'm here because you're here you a re- did a this resent- to me yeah, they res- a yeah so it, it but a craig it, craig is really nailing the head on it i think it's once you you know outside of people like nurses and you know first responders and things like that like it it becomes i, I remember feeling it when i worked at mall at mall and stuff like that you know what i mean it's that day after thanksgiving thing where you're like why do we do this to ourselves as a society? Why can't there just be a day where everybody gets to go home? Because <laughs> like, that's the way. Remember, years and years ago, long before you were born, right now, there was well, a thing called Sunday, it. and everything was closed. Yeah. Do you remember those? Yeah. You might. I, I remember it, and that was just the day. But I'm sitting here. All I've got through my head is, "I'll be home for Christmas." Is stuck in my head now, because my my favorite Christmas song is the Darling Love Baby, Please Come Home. Oh, because it opened the Gremlins movie, which I watched an unhealthy amount of times as a Amazing child. Movie. One, <laughs> yeah. of, one of the best movies ever. <laughs> Any um, other uh, questions before we move on? Yeah, I'm gonna throw in a couple more there. Oh, I do. I do want to say something. No, somebody I, in the chat I asked, said something no, about Christmas. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, that face. First, wow. uh, first, Alyssa thrown me under the bus, disagreeing with me about JPEG. <laughs> She's never coming He's back. Hold that against now, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, <laughs> I've. I brought her on here. I can take her out of here. Cut the feed. Cut the so feed. We, no, okay, go ahead, Ron. No, I was just going to say, somebody had a nice nice sentiment in the chat. Um, they were saying that what they do in their house is they put up the tree right after right after Halloween, but they don't put the ornaments on until the day after Thanksgiving. Oh, and I was I like, like, oh, that's a nice, that's like, nice. add See, some of the... Everything, I everything in my house goes up but yeah. the tree because we have a real a live tree, mm-hmm. and we go get it the day Did after Thanksgiving. Yeah. It feels like it's extra hard here. That's the only thing to, like, but it's worth to maintain it. it. 
I had a friend that would put up a Nightmare Before Christmas tree so that they could leave it up between Halloween oh, yeah. and Christmas we and have just a, be done. We have a, a, a pine tree in our living room that's artificial, a tall, like mm-hmm. an alpine pine in the corner that's up all year. And right now it's Halloween. It'll be it'll oh, be covered cool. in hearts. It'll be covered in, you know, whatever the season is. Yeah. But yard tree goes up day after Thanksgiving. Do you cover it in little trees for Arbor Day? We do. Good idea. Like, yeah. Little, little extra, trees? Yeah, little trees. Yeah. yeah, you could put palm trees on. Just saying. Just a thought. We got a new industry, baby. <laughs> the Arbor Tree tree. Sorry, Craig. I don't think so. <laughs> I, What's I a qu- give us a so. question. What's a question? Okay, Mary Comment. Jo asked a question regarding Christmas. Mary Jo, Mary Jo? Yes. Um, I just, I got, she asked two questions in a row, so it confused me for a second there. Uh, I'll ask her second question. Which park does it best for Christmas? <sighs> Disneyland. 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 Well, let's stick to Walt Disney World right now. Yeah, I've never, no, I've never seen Disneyland for Christmas, but I would like to. Uh, sea World does it best for Christmas. <laughs> no. Magic, Magic Kingdom still is the best, and then Hollywood Studios right after for me. I like the tree at Hollywood Studios. I, I, I like Magic Kingdom. I don't know. I do feel like that each park in years of late, it. I feel like they are. There's a lot more celebrating. Like when I, I feel like when I first moved here. It was very much like Main Street at Magic Kingdom. But, ne- I mean, I'm sure they always had the trees out at all the parks. But it feels like, you know, Animal Kingdom has the, they do the, they were doing the, um, those big animal, um, what, Puppet what are they called? Yeah. Puppet, yeah. They, they would be around and, and stuff. So I feel like it, the celebration is kind of spread out, which is nice. Yeah, I think Hollywood for me. Um, I, I like both Magic Kingdom and Hollywood. I've never been to disneyland i've been to disneyland for halloween just not just not uh, that was nice too I know. it's amazing for halloween, cool. but if it's anything like that then yeah i'll probably pick disneyland but i haven't been there yet i also like how epcot gives you a little taste of how different places yeah. celebrate uh, yeah. the holidays mm-hmm. and so you see a little bit more and it's doesn't feel just as monotonous as, as looking at the uh, same I, we I like them all mary joe yeah. next question i don't know well i think hollywood studios i think the last couple of years because i love what tower terror looks like when it has the like lighting on it at yeah, night yeah, yeah, yeah. and um you know, I they didn't put out. I don't think they put out all their decorations everywhere last year. So I don't know if they are this year because they didn't do Toy Story Land last year. I don't think, and they had done it 2019 was the first year. So I'm curious to see if it's in like full force this year or not. Uh, everything was up besides Toy Story Land. That was like the. It was as if they just lost the decorations over the pandemic. Someone the big ham them, cookie. Someone someone took them home and, you know, put them up around their Didn't yard or something and never brought them back, <laughs> which is idea. what I would do. But yeah, it's, it's tough. Hollywood Studios, I think, has the best decor because it also, it's, you know, it, it's that vintage 30s, 40s look that just works real well. If they would bring back Jingle Bell, Jingle Bam, yeah. that would kind of round out that park because... The Tower of Terror uh, show is great, but it is it is what it is, and you need a little bit more throughout the day, whereas Epcot, I mean, you could spend an entire day at Epcot doing nothing but going around and listening to the different storytellers. You could do the Candlelight Processional. You can do Living with the Land with its overlay. Uh, you know, Spaceship Earth doing Beacons of Magic with a little holiday flair to it. There's, You, you can spend all day at Epcot from the time that park opens, just being immersed in the food uh, and the, uh, the entertainment and then the food because they also throw in all of the festival of the holidays food as well. So I think Epcot actually has... It, it, Epcot is probably the best if you just wanted to be immersed in the holidays. But uh, I think Hollywood Studios is still my favorite. I, I will give a special mention to SeaWorld just because I'm a big Disney nut. And I always, I think, am closed off when somebody does something a little good and I want to say, wow, that's really good, but not, you know, better than Disney and I, I'm reserved with that. But SeaWorld, when you see the, the ice skating performance, have you been? No. Has anybody here seen yeah. that? There? You, there's an ice wow. skating thing, the whole uh, well experience, it becomes very Christmassy and you just are like, they do this pretty good. It's a great Christmas feeling if you have not done SeaWorld Christmas, it's worth seeing. It's a Christmas mood. It's not. Yeah, it's a more of a mood. Yeah, <laughs> it's a mood. It's it's not like you're gonna go and be blown away by anything. I'm also harsher on it. I have seen the ice skating. Okay. It's I. Yeah, it's it's a cute little show that they do. I would say I it's, it's the music that gets me. It's, the music. Gets you know, me. it's a step up above watching ice skating on a Royal Caribbean <laughs> ship for <laughs> sure. But it's also you know you're not watching. 
you're not watching the Olympics happening and playing out in the ice capades really on a bigger form with it. But no, it's every every park in Orlando feels special in its own way. Um, obviously, Mickey's Very Merry Christmas Party is held behind a paywall, except up till the, the week of Christmas. And then finally it's released, but you're dealing with the madness and insanity of it. Uh, but you know, at least with the other parks, it's all included. And that includes the rest of Walt Disney world. There's, there's no, there's nothing you can like can miss out on in the other parks by not having that extra ticket. Really, it's just very Merry Christmas party. So whether you do go to universal sea world or any of the other Walt Disney world parks, you, you have, you have that Christmas spirit alive especially at disney springs yeah christmas Christmas all year round it's just a mall ruben you have a topic for us i don't think it do do i I thought you did no he doesn't (laughs) Teresa, you have a topic for us it's a quick one you ready yeah buzz lightyear woody and jesse are back at toy story land for meet and greets Oh, that's pretty big, because wasn't there a whole think, thing about character meet and greets yeah. going away and everybody... Well, they back. came back gradually, and as of, I think, last week, this past weekend, they're back, so my life's complete. Is, are you happy about that? I'm happy about that. Are you happy about that? I'm very excited. Love a good Jesse meet and greet. And that's the updated character. They recently updated them. Did they? The faces, yeah. That's what the faces? Yeah, the faces, yeah. Are they? <laughs> okay. Did you see that? The old ones, it just looks good. Rhino, you have a topic for us. I do. Um, the Epcot International Festival of the Arts has a, uh, announced. It hasn't announced. Disney has announced <laughs> when those when it will return. It is January thirteenth through February twentieth, twenty twenty three. I do really enjoy this um, this festival quite a bit. The uh, Disney on Broadway concert series is returning for the festival as well this year. Um, in 2023, 16 food studios will serve up art-inspired menus appealing to a variety of palettes. The creations are true works of art. These are, I believe, Jackie Gailey's words, of course, as you can tell. She's always got a wonderful flourish on everything. Um, let me see here. Um, is this... There's two new food studios this year, so that I, I was right. I should have just trusted myself. There's one called Modern, which is located near Test Track, presented by Chevrolet... <laughs> Okay. Which will feature new avant-garde like menu medication. items. I, test track is prevented by Chevrolet, <laughs> not the like, food booth. I said that weird. Um, the other new food booth, uh, the studio, excuse me, is Figment's Inspiration Station at the Odyssey Art, Food, and Little Spark of Magic. Ooh. And uh, that's going to be, yeah, just colorful stuff. There's no real actual colorful information stuff. about it. They say... Food. Yeah. Um, food. I'm sure that like as we get closer to January, we're going to get a lot more information about it but um there's going to be a more than 100 disney and visiting artists that'll showcase their eye-catching works of art guests of all ages can express their creative side by learning to draw a disney character at animation academy um and then there's expression expression section which is that big um mural that they do every year the paint by numbers mural that'll be there um but yeah, I, I like it. I, I think they always do a really good job with the food. It does, it, it, comparatively like to other festivals, I do feel like one of the things is because I feel like it looks so good and it and I find it to generally taste good too, what I've had there at least in my experience. It does take a little bit longer to get through the lines sometimes because all the plating is usually very um, a little more intricate and stuff. But I, I, I think it's fun. I think it's cool. I like it. Yeah, Epcot is probably the park I spend the most time at. Even though Hollywood Studios is my favorite park, for some reason I always find myself back at Epcot. Um, And I actually love this festival. Um, One of my favorite things, I mean, one of the things that actually introduced to me, I've never seen Freaky Friday the Musical, never even heard of it. And they did, like, performances uh, last year from it and it got me really interested. And I went and actually uh, went and saw it, and it it, it was phenomenal. That's great. Um, So it's it's a really, really good um, way to kind of, like, be introduced to things you might not have experienced before. Um, The shows are amazing. They're incredible. They're actually – these are – I mean, I I know Ryan just uh, said it, but these are actually uh, people from Broadway or that were on the original – uh, cast for uh, for these shows coming and performing in these concerts and, mm-hmm. and it's, it's incredible it's amazing to watch so it's definitely a really really cool experience i always feel like i need more money at festival of the arts i want to oh, buy know, all the right? artwork i need a ten thousand dollar coupon to walk into that's the way i feel right to feel satisfied. i want to just come home with everything 
Oh, no, so I was no, going to no, say, okay. I think Festival of the Arts is just one that's really fun. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not as heavy. Like, food, food and wine is nice because you get to have all of the different, off, you know, like, offerings in the booths and such and the, the countries. But I feel like what Festival of the Arts does different is that it puts things in front of you that maybe you wouldn't have even thought to try or it makes things a lot differently, um, like, as far as presentation and everything. And you can just have fun with it and enjoy it um, without feeling like you're missing something or, or that you're not seeing it because it really is what you take from it that makes it, impa- uh, you know, like, important and special. And it doesn't overstay its welcome. Yeah, it's short. It's very short. Yeah, it's just a month and a half. I, I, honestly, I feel like it's maybe a little too short compared yeah. to the other ones. <laughs> but but still, I mean, it's great. It's like, I like the color. It adds a lot of color to the park. And so it's like, it's always... In January, really, right? Really nice. Well, that's the thing. January, the weather is going to be on your side that time of year, too. So it'll be nice. They, they bring know, it in you know, to celebrate my birthday. My birthday, too. Yeah. January, babies. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Best time. Good times. So here's a good question about it. Uh, Since everyone seems to have positive things to say about this festival, uh, we know that the next one that comes right after it is, of course, the Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival, and that starts in March. But uh, Gene asked, do we think that Gene... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Sorry. Uh, do we think that they will ever extend the dates of this festival? Or should they? I'll, I'll throw that in there, too. Would we rather see a longer Festival of the Arts and a shorter Flower and Garden I, Festival? Why can't they combine the two? I like, don't know. Then it would just be one big... Is the problem the availability maybe of the artists that they can maybe, take yeah. off three months of their no, life? No, I don't think it's a problem. I think it's a way to sell merchandise. Is it You rebrand, you rebrand, people buy, people buy, people buy. So if you keep it one thing all year, now you've taken away a whole festival of merchandise that would normally sell. I think that's part of it. I like when I, it, I'm just weird. I like when a festival starts at the beginning of the month and ends at the end of another month. So I, right. feel like I find it weird to end like a week and a half into a month or something like that. So I would be okay with like a... January, February, March, April. It would be easier to keep and, track of that's know, for sure. Like, bump, right? Like I don't know. Does the festival? When does the festival? It ends the middle of February. I think it was like February tenth. Did I say thirteenth? It was the first half. I think because yeah. it goes it into President's window, Week, so, and yeah. that's a really heavy traffic demand. So they don't need to extend a festival because the people will be here. As sad as that, you know. No, I think you're right. Yeah. President's Week is ridiculous. Yeah, but it's to counter life. that, they have extended. You know. The Flower and Garden Festival goes into summer. They've extended yeah. mm-hmm. food and wine to start in the summer now, too. So it's like, are holidays really enough to justify to keep people away? And are people really going to say it's President's Day on top of the fact that it's Festival of the Arts, too? People I'm going like, to be you know what people it. like? People I like to would. start out their holiday with Halloween and end it with Christmas. They like overlapping the two. And I think it's the same thing with anything. They want to get as much in while they're here. Yeah, I forget. It was a couple of years ago. It was timed just right. And I feel like we're approaching that again right now where like it, the week, it depends on what day Halloween is and then how quickly like mm-hmm. the next Halloween, the to capitalize the most dates you can have right. for the Christmas party. I remember it being like if you had come on Halloween and you would stay a week, then you would be you would have been able to do the last do both, Halloween party right? and the first Christmas party. And the same thing and was, it hasn't timed out just right. Like and that I think the while, same thing with Flower and Garden. They're extending it farther because there's people that can't travel until summer because of their kids. So now they're you know, they can bring it into the summer season a little bit. Well see my and the thing, prices are gonna go. Why not make something different that's not food and wine or something like that? Like another you know what I mean? Like it gets to a point where you're like it starts to feel a little stale. I like things where it takes a little longer because it gives you that time, especially as a local, to be able to go back and try things more and more and more. But food and wine has been around. The fact well, that it started in mid-July has been like a weird, like, and that's still going. Like, right. Right? Two more weeks? Yeah. 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 So yeah. you got food, wine, flowers, Four months, artists. Yeah. What else do you want to celebrate right now? We don't need to celebrate anything else. I'll tell you what they need to do. <laughs> they, they, need to, they need to fix the order. So first and foremost, we're talking about Festival of the Arts starting in January. Uh, I know for the rest of at least like the Northeast, that is still the winter. I mean, it is winter, uh, but let's be real. Like, so in, in Florida, where you're coming, That's when we have our springtime weather, where it actually feels great. By the time you get to the first week of March, it's already back up in the 90s. And so Disney is working their butts off to keep all of the 
all of the plants alive, this fresh bloom <laughs> that would be everywhere else, you know, in like the Northeast and other parts of the country. But in Walt Disney World, it is it it's already at the point where it's going to start burning out. So let's move. Let's move the flower and garden festival more towards like January and do that for the first couple months until it gets to the point it's too hot and then switch it into Festival of the Arts. No, because then the paint's running and it's too hot and I think the the paint would dry quick. (laughs) Dry quick. I don't think paint melts. I don't know, but I I just I don't want to be out there. The artists don't want to be out there in the heat. You know, this is the way Craig has spoken. <laughs> I don't know. Oh my God. Uh, these poor artists <laughs> thinking about them being in the heat while cast members are constantly standing outside in the heat. Yet these ones are hoping to make a living doing something that they truly love and get to, you know, show themselves creatively. But my God, we can't keep them in the heat. <laughs> Those I'm poor, poor people. And their paints. Their gotta, paints will their paints run. Are running. The, the paints paint will running. run. We, we, do have a, we do have a question in the chat it's here. It's sticky. Paints will run. Said, when do they have Grinchmas season? Asking for a friend. This question is from Orlando, Universal Orlando Resort. <laughs> <laughs> it is not. Really? Yeah. I'm looking at them right now. I was going to bring that up <laughs> earlier, but I was like, I, have my I thought about Oh my it God, I thought about it. Well, because he said SeaWorld, and I said, if you want to talk about a park where it's all like included in the cool celebrations Grinch they do for the holidays, I think Grinch Universal Miss? kind of knocks oh, yeah. it out of the Grinch park. Grinchmas is my part. I, I didn't Six say it earlier because oh, I knew I we were it. focusing on uh, the Disney parks, but Grinchmas, me being a Grinch of Christmas, I guess, I absolutely love Grinchmas, so the show is amazing. Um, but I actually like, uh, is it Mayheim Steamroller, I think it yeah, is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're fantastic. Um, they still come every year, I think, right? So uh, I, I love going going to see them. So they're they're amazing. Oh, I feel Their bad marketing now. has been great though, because this morning there was a there was the post that took place inside of the Halloween Horror Nights inside of uh, Dead Man's Pier, and it was like the lights were flickering on and off, and it was like it's Earl the Squirrel has like bitten through the power to be able to. So I thought it was great how they did like I love that they did that mashup and were acknowledging like one and then the other. I think they have a fun Man. sense of humor about it. I'm sorry, Universal. Yeah, don't come what? after us. No, again. I don't sorry. think they're upset. I think they've gotten what they accomplished. They derail <laughs> they our conversation. To... Well, oh, okay. and then <laughs> they need to step up and start extending Grinchmas into Halloween because yes. the Grinch, it's his favorite why? holiday. It is his favorite holiday. So he hates Christmas, obviously, but he loves Halloween. So let's start making Seuss Landing dressed up for, for Halloween and involve that aspect to it. That would be really cool. No, yeah. I would be okay with that because Halloween Horror Nights and all, like, all the Halloween decora- uh, decorations could be over at Universal Studios and then Islands Adventure can start setting up for Christmas. So I'm okay with that, I guess. Yeah. Well, good. <laughs> your, your permi- I, you have my permission, guys. So. <laughs> Let me write that down. I would, even he if it just okay was a dinner, this. like a di- like you know how they do the Christmas the or, um, breakfast breakfast with the Grinch. I think like a Halloween with the Grinch would be a lot of fun. Oh, the, the Christmas one is so fun though. Yeah. Why have they not? That's where you can get the uh, or I don't want to say it's definitely there still, but that's where you could get the uh, green eggs and ham breakfast pizza. Yeah. I love that. Is it crazy that they haven't done like a scary like Grinch like haunted house at uh, like Halloween Horror Nights or something? Why what, would what you it? change the branding of the Grinch? He's uh, not very scary. Okay. They, they change the branding of everything else. I mean what, they, 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 they have done it for the Grinch. That's they nasty. did the, yeah, We're going way off topic but I know they changed it with the Illuminations <laughs> version of the Grinch like the, the artwork and stuff. I See I so. love a Sco- since they have Scooby-Doo in the park I'm still hoping for a Scooby-Doo uh, haunted house, house some year. Yeah. That'd be cool. That's that my, would like, be fun. That's my thing. Yeah. They we're play just with tra- that stuff sometimes. So. If they're watching Barbarian, that needs to be a Halloween Horror Nights house. Oh my I, goodness. I don't know that Well, they, they just totally took it over, that. didn't that they? That would be good. What were we talking about before this? <laughs> Universal <laughs> succeed. You were just talking right. about... <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I suggested the new schedule for how the festival should happen, and no one agrees with me, and I'm okay with that. I, I agree. Okay. I agree. Why do you him. agree with him? Why do you always have to agree with him? I agree with Craig. Craig is pretty smart. I agree with him. Sorry. Yeah, this time I agree with him. Just... Sometimes I don't. This time I agree. I can, I can fluctuate it. Move food and wine to be in this spot, in a different spot. Move that, and then have festival. Well, that's be... too hot to well, eat. Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's always been too freaking hot to eat at the festival. That's why it, it's the absolute On top of worst. A garbage can. It's great right? for the last oh. two weeks of the event because you might have like one cooler night at the end of the night, but it's usually pretty miserable. So what we do is we keep we keep the Flower and Garden Festival for the first three months, January through March, and then we jump straight into food and wine for months and months and months. 
and hear me out. The reason we do this is then once we get to September, we add in Festival of the Arts so people can start buying all of that art as Christmas presents and then that leads into the festival of the holidays. I feel like in Craig's house there is a wall <laughs> with like threads and push pins that lay this all out in detail. It's a closet. I actually agree with that one. I actually some... agree with that actually timeline. So I'm with you there. Actually Thank you. Much, to be Thank you. Really? What? <laughs> I just said I, I agree I with Ryan. I don't think Craig cares that much, to be honest with you. <laughs> no, yeah, no. I'll still avoid it all anyway. <laughs> but it's, at least it would be more organized for what makes more sense in my messed in up In your habit. mind. Yeah. I think we need more questions. Do we have more? What? what? Do we have more what? questions? I don't no. What, about, what, about what? About yeah. everything. <laughs> about anything. Oh my gosh. We're... You were asking questions that people were asking. Oh, no, no we, we went over it. In relation we went over to everything. what the topics were. Yeah. So, we okay. post, so Craig does this thing. He posts the topics for what the niche I understand. are on our Patreon. So you're all no, done? I'm saying it to the people out on oh, the oh, internet okay. so they also know. Is that every week the out the Craig, gets the, Craig gets the topics as early as... They are given to him as he can <laughs> and post them on Patreon and then allows our Patreon supporters to get in there and ask some questions that maybe we wouldn't have thought of otherwise. And uh, I believe that's open to every, all of our Patreon supporters. Cool beans. So, yeah. So I think that was a fun, that was a cool idea that he had. I like that a lot. No, I can talk about my topic. Please do. So uh, last week or earlier in the week on TikTok, Depending on how your weeks run, uh, they once again teased that the Walt Disney World Railroad <sighs> might actually come back sometime in our lifetime. Uh, <laughs> I mean, that being said, they have obviously run the trains slightly before. Like, I know they pulled them out of the station and then basically just backed them right back into the main station where they're all held, not the, the main street station, but where the, the trains stay overnight. So it's not the first time, but like the, the TikTok video ended with it basically starting to go over the new track that was laid down at the Fantasyland station. And so, yeah, they're, at the very least, Disney wants to remind us that the train still exists and will come back, but it, it blows my mind how long it's been closed. And I know it's been closed because of Tron and... That was ultimately something that had to happen to be able to make that all work. But like one of my friends, Ashley, like she's getting ready to move out of state soon and posted like it's wild that her child that's now four years old has never ridden on the Walt Disney World Railroad in their entire lifetime. How because that's how that's sad. It's been like it four years now, three wow. years, four years, somewhere that is in so there. That's so sad. Well, so. yeah, it was closed before the pandemic. So, I mean. That started in 2020. It's the end of 2022. So right there, that's that's three years in March, and it was closed in 20 before 2019. I thought. I, don't, I can't remember, but it was definitely closed before I that. I missed the sound. I missed the sound of the train going around the kingdom. Yeah. I took a lot of things for granted, like even Fantasmic. I'm thrilled that it's coming back. Oh, Fantasmic. Yeah. <laughs> but I but I took it for granted. Like when it was there. I didn't go see it all the time. I was like, yeah, it's there. When it's gone, why do I want it? It's like that with I, anything. You miss, yeah, the, you you miss know, this it. lake on fire, and I have nieces and nephews that I can't show it to, and it's, it really hurts, and I'm like, I can't take it for granted. Yeah, for me personally, um, I've, I'm 31 years old now, um, and I have never uh, rode that train either. So yeah. <laughs> I actually didn't know it existed, honestly. <laughs> um, full disclosure, I've seen the tracks there. I've always like wondered, hey, why isn't that train there? I'm one of those people that just goes and like goes to the parks and immediately start jumping on rides. So like I'm constantly going and I just don't notice the the finer things, I guess, or uh, the more niche things. And I've just never really noticed it until you guys literally just brought it up. It's a so. nice <laughs> relaxing trip. There's a good audio track and there's there are some new things to see when you're on the train. Yeah, things you don't see that you don't know are there. So is it like an attraction that you have that normally has its own queue and everything? Yeah. I mean, yeah. It has its own queue, but it, you could use it as an attraction or as transportation. A transportation. I like it for transportation. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. weird. I never heard of it. That's, that's, really? Yeah, well, what do you I, think I the know. little train stations were for? I thought it was just for looks. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was just to look the aesthetic <laughs> like, that they're trying. To you didn't see oh, the look look. train station. That's <laughs> interesting. You've but seen it in the front when you're going. Into, I mean, you see it like pass in the front as you go under the train the, station. Maybe maybe it's been so long since I saw it. And then the one in the forgot. Yeah. We need you to get on it. Yeah, no. Thank okay. you for being vulnerable with us about that, though. <laughs> <laughs> right? Sharing. 
That's interesting. Cool. We got <laughs> Host. Cool. <laughs> we got anything else? No. That's all of us. All right. I think we. I think we. Anything else you want to make? Alyssa, I, you're here. I want to hear anything you want to talk about before I cut oh this boy, off. boy, don't put me on the spot. No, I, I want to just say thank you for letting me jump in and, and be a part of the conversation today. It was a pleasure. This you was really good easy. Fit. Yeah, it feels like you've been here forever. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I know you forever. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. It's the Northeast in us. I could, oh, are you originally from New York? I'm from New Jersey. Oh, okay. Yeah. Long Island. Yeah. All right. I get it. Jersey. Yeah. I Everywhere. hope you guys are sticking around for the Patreon after show. We have no idea what it's going to be about. Could be about anything. Uh, that if you are not a Patreon member, you can go to patreon.com slash disunplugged. You can join right now and be a part of the next hour Patreon show that we're going to do. I am going to say thank you very much. It's always an honor to be in this chair, and it's always a lot of pressure. So thank you again for all being great here. And uh, as Rhino rolls his eyes. Oh, I'm just reading the <laughs> comments. It's fine. <laughs> when kindness is an option, choose it. And for Pete's sake, stay out of the damn lakes.